Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 357 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined as always on occasion by my mainest man, the pride of Oak Park and River Forest High School in Chicago, Illinois, Willie Saylor. To my left, special guest, Flow Films producer, Funkamaniac, once beat Joe Dubuque, Mark Bader. <laughs> He gets embarrassed that I bring that. Oh, I lost Ooh, twice. But it happened. I would, I would introduce if I beat Joe Dubuque in, in anything ping pong. I would probably just lead with that in every. Hey, Christian Piles beat Joe Dubuque. Just no, in all. If Christian, if you, if Christian beat Joe Dubuque, this show would be called "I Beat Joe Dubuque Radio Live." <laughs> it would be called "I." It would be Christian Piles beat Joe Dubuque Radio Live. Okay, so thank you so much. So sorry. So Bader's here. Bracky's What's up, guys? Here in the in the hanging out, chilling, and yes. Many of you have asked, and yes, we will have Alien Hour with Kyle Bracky. It is quickly becoming um, your favorite segment. Um, and we started a movement, or I should say Kyle started a movement with the Avril thing. It has gone mainstream, and uh, we'll, uh, Kyle can provide that update later. Is she dead or no? Of course she's dead. Of course she's dead. Okay. Ba- of course she's I, dead. I, have, I haven't watched the show. In, well, in thanks. Thanks for your support. I mean, I love you guys, but I've cl- changed diapers and stuff. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mark Bader, you're here because tomorrow we are dropping a flow film about our friend, your dear friend, mm-hmm. Benjamin Askren. He fights Saturday. It's a huge weekend. I, I am uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it, but I'm really excited for this film to drop noon central tomorrow live and then 7. It's the only way you can watch it tomorrow. So make plans. Quit. I would quit your job personally. Just quit so you can watch it. Um, yeah, take some time. Check it out. But, but talk to us a little bit about the film. Why are you excited about it? Why should uh, the people at home watch this? Um, I mean, why am I excited? I mean, it tells the story of Ben Askin, who who I've been really close to him, but I, I at, at the same time been a big fan. And um, he's done things differently. His wrestling's been different. His personality's been different, and kind of how he got to be where he is. Um, it's like it in the sense of we dig deep into somebody's life. It's like some you know basically all the other flow films. Um, and you kind of, you know, and he's he's got this trash talking or this big personality. And it kind of, you hear from his high school coach about, you know, he used to be quiet and this and that in class. And then, like, then when you got him in the wrestling realm, holy smokes, this guy rubber chickens and briefcases and, and how his personality just kind of evolved. And alongside that, how his, or maybe even first, how his, how his style evolved. And I'm too slow and I'm not strong enough and guys are getting into my legs and... Rest of history. I, I heard the story that he, he, you know, he has told me, you know, he was weighed 130 pounds and was very fat. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then I <laughs> saw the video. He was a fat person. He was a fat little kid. He was a fat kid. And like, the, to me, that is like the biggest signal that he was going to have success. The fact that he was how old and he decided 10 or I'm going to. He was like 10, 11, 12, and he's like, I need to lose some weight. Well, and he lost 30 pounds. That is unbelievable. If you look at him today, you know, he doesn't – even in the Olympics, 163, which is like the thinnest I ever saw him, yeah. he still has this like – I'm sure tomorrow or this this weekend fighting at 170, he's going to have like a little round – thing on his hips he's like he is a fat person body you know how some people are just large kind of by yeah. nature and and he lost all that but it's like still this this body of a, a man who should be fat or could be you if know he let himself go it would be problematic he was now he, he barely yeah. let himself go you know after the fight and his retirement fight in singapore and it was about just about a year i think um until he was it, housing a lot of bread at your wedding he was i was concerned I think about he told me he was does he say 209 was his top? Sorry to throw you under the bus, Ben, if that's the case. But I think at some point, and that's like, think about if it had gone on for a year, two, three, four, five, ten. We should be thanking Dana White. He may have <laughs> saved Ben's life. So, hey, did you, any, throughout the course of, of making this film, you knew, you hosted Ben on his, like, recruiting trip. So you've known Ben, what, 15, 10, 15 2002, years? 2002, 16 years, we'll say. Um, was there anything... You learned about Ben throughout the the filming of this through, through interviewing him or interviewing coaches. 
Mm. You were there for a lot of it. A lot of the stuff you're yeah, asking. Yeah, so it's funny. About. It's funny because most of the time you go into these films, um, I take like Colot for example. The first time I ever talked to Kerry Colot was when I, I, you know, got his number somehow and called him, and I was like, "Hey, it's Mark Bader from Flow. We got these films. We could be doing on you and this and that." So I learned a lot about Kerry through the whole process, and especially spending right. a couple of days with him. Um, I basically knew the story we wanted to tell here. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot that surprised me. Um, there was one thing, um, and it, it's not in the film because we're essentially done with it. Some small corrections are going on and, and, and tweaks. But he said, in, in the, we went back and interviewed him um, in December, I think, you know, so we could talk about the UFC and, and everything else to kind of have one final interview. And, and, and near, you know, we just kept going. I'm kind of done, but I'm kind of just wanting to. Just yeah. keep it going. See if not something else will pop out. You and and uh, he's like, you know what? He's like, lately, uh, you know, he's a well-read and he's a talented guy. Everybody kind of gets. He's like, lately, I've been, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I just have this feeling like I'm I'm here for a greater purpose. I'm here for a higher purpose. I don't know exactly how he said it, but he was basically like, I'm here. I I'm, my purpose to be is to be impactful, and I don't know exactly how, where that is and what that. I don't know, even if message is the right word. Cause he was pretty vague about it, but that was one thing that that was really interesting to me. I think he said he had only told his wife, and I'm only sharing it because he shared it on camera, and I'm sure we'll have, um, <coughs> you know, we'll have uh, snippets come out afterwards, and that'll probably be part of it. But um, that was interesting, you know. That was really interesting. Well, That's he's definitely having a huge impact with, um, you know, with his coaching and, and whatnot. What, what's been interesting to me. And obviously, you know, we at Flow have a special connection with Ben. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's our friend. He's been part of, well, not part of Flow technically, but. But really, he has. The start. I mean, that's the thing. I, I feel like Ben is a big part of why Flow was able. I mean, him allowing Martin to kind of embed himself with him and yeah. follow the biggest star in wrestling at the time and that kind of access. And you give Coach Smith a lot of credit for, yeah. for that yeah. as well. Um, kind of really, I mean, it had me on Flow every single day just praying that something from. Ben Askren would go up. Um, but my question is, and what, what has been interesting is, like, now that Ben is in the UFC, he's got all this, like, mainstream interest, and people, like, seem to, like, l love him or find he's polarizing. And to me, it's like, well, of course, and it's why I was so annoyed all along. Why is this guy not getting his shot? What, what was Dana thinking all these years? Like, this is a guy, you have all these idiots in there who can barely string sentences together. These fake wannabe trash talkers that they just set, they make fools of themselves. There's a couple McGregors, right? There's some guys that are really, really good at it and, and building fights. But most of all, these guys stink. And you've got Ben who will make you pick a side every single time. <laughs> now, it's like so obvious, right? And then as soon as he gets any mainstream attention, which he would have had if he was in the UFC 10 years ago, uh, it would have been like this. They could have had a, a, a star welterweight for 10 years. I'm like, what were you thinking? I, I don't know. That's first, how I've been First thinking. of all, I think um, he should have been in the UFC long ago. Of course. Or, or there's, you know, that, that seems obvious. But his trash talking or whatever you want to call it that he's doing these days, it's it's evolved. And it's gotten better. And I was at his fights early on. I and mean, when his first couple fights in Bellator, um, he, 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 he gets this kid, Ryan Thomas, in some kind of head headlock. Or, you know, he chokes him. But the, the kid never tapped, but the ref stops it, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and it was like this controversy. And as soon as they tap, you know, the ref stopped it. He's like, I'm, I'm fine. And I'm, I was like, wow, okay. And then they get in the press conference afterwards. And Ben starts chirping at him. And everybody's like, what? And But it wasn't the same kind of level that it is now. It was like, just said like his fighting was probably at a, I don't know, a six back then. And it's closer to a 10 now. Um, his his trash talking and his, his whatever else wasn't where it is now. And I'm not saying that's what kept know. him out He's of the UFC. Freaking good. I'm telling you, this is how I've seen it. When I saw him at this UFC press conference, I don't know, a month ago, two months ago recently, and, and all the stuff he's done since... He's been into the UFC. It's like, oh my God. He's unleashing a beast that I've never seen in a way I've never seen it. Verbally, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I think, I think it's evolved too. Um, Bader, do you think that he's like actively worked on it or he's just gotten better at it. That's, I think he's probably just gotten better at it, but I mean, um, I know he's friends with Chael and I think that's the kind of thing Chael actively works on or at least thinks yeah. about, right? You don't have to like stand in the mirror and, and practice it, but I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if stuff rattles around his head and um, yeah. he's kind of, yeah. 
if he if he tried to get better at it. You know, and, and another thing too about why it wasn't Ben in there. I mean, <clears throat> he was good enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, his his persona is good. His trash talk's good. Um, but he made an interesting statement on his podcast um, a couple days ago. I listened to it yesterday. Um, that. They, the UFC is surprised that he's so receptive. Uh, he's so People on like the him. ball. Okay. Le- well, no, like, like yeah, he answers point. email and he shows up on time. And he, <laughs> he emails them for, he emails them and says, "Hey, uh, my flight for this and that." And he said the representatives at USC are like, "You are the greatest thing ever because <laughs> they have, they have like a roster of three hundred jabronis that just <laughs> are not like." communicative yeah so what i'm saying what i'm saying is he's a pro right he's not gonna miss weight they took a lot of criticism for guys missing weight and stuff Mm -hmm. like that they took a lot of criticism for guys (laughs) missing um a media day or whatever um that's a that's another attribute that Mm -hmm. ben has well you know i think what one thing that contribute you know ufc is is a very successful organization for sure and They could, they could obviously afford to not have Ben Askren. And when you call Dana White a liar about what he said about <laughs> drug testing, and Dana was lying. Dana, you were lying about that. You can drug test these athletes because you are now. Yeah. Um, but I think if you if you he was calling them out, he's like, we don't, I don't have to deal with this guy. Yeah. And I don't it, want him in my organization. And Ben's kind of said this, right? It's it's he, he they you know probably didn't want somebody coming straight from Bellator potentially winning and then saying, look, see the best guys do come from Bellator. That's true. On too. top of that, just like I said, his his um, talking has evolved, his fighting has evolved, and it was kind of boring back then. It was more take you down, and and hold you and, and punch you with these little pillow punches. And now he's he's found better ways to. A uh, 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 pound and ground, I guess, ground and pound uh, guys, and, and beat them up on the ground rather than just like constantly trying for submissions, and it kind of looks boring. Um, and I'm really, I'm interested to see his stand up. I don't think he's gonna go out and try to go toe to toe and trade with Robbie Lawler, but I think um, he might not get hit as money, much as people think, and maybe he will, right? And that's what's like, that's why I'm gonna watch. I, what's, I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and what's what's interesting, I mean. It, you talk about his evolution there, and, that, and that's what Ben Askren. I think more than anything, he's he's a guy who evolves. But um, looking at his last couple of fights, TKO, TKO, submission, unanimous decision, uh, TKO, submission, TKO, TKO. Um, those are his last whatever ten fights or so. He's finishing fights, so uh, definitely a lot of evolution there. A lot um, of them were ugly too. Yeah, he just embarrasses these guys. And and and, and, and I'll t- I'll take a step back and say these guys aren't top ten fighters. Uh, most of them. Maybe if you go back to his last ten fights, maybe. But you know, and he'll sure. say this, right? He's, he's yeah, he knows. Yeah, he's making money, not taking damage, not fighting. But, Shinya Aoki is a legend, probably on the back half of his career, the last guy he fought. But yeah, it's an interesting matchup, Bader. Everybody says, you know, as soon as it was announced, that um, everybody said Lawler's probably the guy in the division that presents the most challenges to Ben style. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, you have to think if Ben if Ben wins, if he beats Lawler, then man, he got to be feeling pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah, and and it is probably one of the tougher challenges. Um, I think we we were just kind of talking off 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 camera yeah. before this. Like, it's like Ben's trained with all these guys, and he's trained with Lawler, and it's been it's been years. So don't get me wrong here, but you know, how am I gonna do? Is Ben gonna be all right? It's like, man, he's he's trained with Tyron Woodley. He's trained with. A lot of the best guys in that division and, and other divisions, and he knows he stacks up. It's like if I'm if I wrestle for Buffalo Gap, um, but I'm training in the Penn State Nittany Lion room every day and, and hanging with these guys, then you know what? I'm not Buffalo Gap level. No offense, Christian. Um, I, I'm I'm you know top notch level, ready to compete with anybody. But I've just been wrestling over in Virginia in high school, so nobody really knows how good I am. All right, all right. You got you got your gap digs in. I'll I just, mean, but for real, it's go like, Gap, go. Go Gap. Thank you. I hope Christian's high school does really well. Thanks, man. I mean, so well. in the piece, <clears throat> in the piece, Bader, getting back to Ben's wrestling, mm-hmm. um, we, what do you focus on much, uh, on most? I mean, is it is it his life now? Is it the evolution of funk? Um, it's 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 uh, it kind of takes you from from introduction to wrestling through through today, and I'd say the majority of it takes place from the time he's starts wrestling through college 
you know, and then there's a big to do around the Jake Herbert match. Um, and, and it does get into his fighting. We went with him to Singapore, um, for his last retirement fight. Um, so, and then there's some stuff with his family when, you know, we go out to Milwaukee and spend time with them, but you know, that's kind of a little collage, but yeah, the, 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 the mo it's a, it's a wrestling film, right? It's a wrestling documentary yep. with other things around it. Well, that's cool. Um, it's okay. Be awesome. Bader, it's awesome having you on. Um, anything else you want to say about the film? We're excited. <sighs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. It's like, it, it was like a year, it's a year, year and a half in the making. Um, we kind of started making it and then we put it on pause because uh, uh, some restructuring things here. And then it was like, hey, he's fighting. Boom. We got, we got like a handful more interviews. Uh, Mike Ironman, I think, is, is a really dynamic interview. I love this guy. You know, Jaden's dad, Jaden. <laughs> Cox's coach. Um, he spent a lot of time with, with Ben back in 2003, four, five, um, when they were like, and if you know anything about Mike Ironman, he's funky and crazy and, and th put those two brains together. And it was, it was a really cool thing, man. If I was a uh, division one head coach, I'd be trying to get Mike Ironman on my freaking staff. You want to talk about a yeah. curveball, a game changer, someone that can, that can mold a style around different wrestlers and, and, and make stuff for, I mean, the, just look, look at the fruit. Look at what this guy has produced. I, I know what, that. I mean, Mike's listen, been, Mike's been listen, to how, listen to how Ben Askren talks about him. Yeah. Listen to what Jaden Cox says about this guy. I, Mike Ironman should be on. I mean, they, they, he should be courted. He should be a Division One <laughs> coach. Peter? I think you, he, you know he, he he's he's been contacted by different schools. I think to to well one he he coaches at um Westminster, which is a D three school I think and I and I believe you know he's been talked to you by some of the larger programs about potentially having an RTC capacity but nothing no nothing staff okay staff. I mean, I'm, I'm saying he should staff. be on staff I mean, he, I mean here's the thing with Iowa you got Mark Perry you have a, a transcendent folk styler mm -hmm. he's the freestyle coach yeah. Mark Perry is someone that 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 I think he could really help the Hawkeyes if he was able to. One, he was a, was a good recruiter, and two, he's just got a different feel. I'm not saying that they should shake up their staff, but I'm just saying Mark Perry's a folk star. With Mike Ironman, his stuff, and I'm not saying. I mean, he coached Jaden Cox. This is a two-time world medalist, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not saying all his stuff is just folk style. But I'm saying if I'm a D1 coach, I don't want this guy just straight RTC. I want him on staff. I want him working with these guys every single day. Hundred percent agree. I wonder if, um, you know. Jaden uh, still being in school has something to do with it. Maybe when Jaden graduates, That's Mike a good will point, take a will. job. That's a good Mike point. will take a job, you know, in a different geographic location. Yeah. Could if not, we'll just hire him as our as our full time coach, and we'll just we'll just make world and Olympic teams. Yeah. Watch, we'll get yeah. Nomad on the squad. Hey, he was he was my coach at at uh, when I wrestled and they won a national title. Yeah, which is yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks, well, I guess Joe was in my corner, but Mike was on the side yelling. And it was Mike. Yeah. It was all Mike, those training camps. Mark Bader. Thanks, awesome, dude. Mark Bader. Hey, check it out. Uh, the Funk, Ben Askren tomorrow, noon and 7 Central, and then on demand Saturday. And, of course, Ben fights this weekend. Oh, Enjoy. man. Let's get together and watch Ben beat someone up. All right. Thanks, Mark Bader.